Guys, we got a huge college football slate. We got, uh, what, OU versus TCU, Auburn, Georgia, and the main event, Notre Dame versus Miami down there in South Florida. It's going to be a great weekend of college football. Anybody got some thoughts on some action? We had some good games last night. We got, man, hella games today. What, we got three showing up on Toledo right now. Donnie, I know you got an opinion on that game. What about Eastern Michigan, Central Michigan? Let's go right around the horn. Donnie, any opinions on tonight's action? Yeah, let's take a look at the first game, 105-106, Kent State, Western Michigan. It's one of those games where you just thumb your nose at Kent State because they are an abomination of a uh, NCAA football team. I would agree. I mean, there's no getting around it. But the one thing sometimes you do want to take pause with because yeah, you need to have, you know, if you're going to have the nail, which obviously is Kent, you're going to have the hammer. You need to have the hammer have a really good quarterback in order to drive that stake into somebody by four touchdowns. You know, if Kent State's playing Logan Woodside, it's going to be a wrap. Even Ohio, Nathan Rourke can get off against that football team. Eastern and Central Michigan both have pretty good quarterbacks. But now you're looking at Western Michigan here, and if you've watched this young kid come in, he's really raw. He's more of a runner, meaning like he's Nathan Rourke from Ohio, but he doesn't throw nearly as well. So then you're going to lean more on your running game. So, okay, Jarvion Franklin is a really good running back, maybe the best overall all running back in the Mac itself. But the one thing that Western Michigan prided itself on coming back this year was John Watson, a quarterback. He's not going to be in this football game. As we know, the backup is going to be in, but also almost a four headed monster. You had Levante Bellamy, the home run threat, Jamari Bogan, the everything running back, Jarvion Franklin, just, you know, the dominant force. Give me the ball 25 times for 160 yards. Then you throw on Devon Tucker as a younger running back that can fill in. You're without three of those four running backs tonight. And also now with the quarterback that doesn't pass very well. Do I think Kent can win the football game? No, because you have to be able to score more than 20 points to beat most football teams in the MAC, or at least even have a chance to be in the football game. But if you're betting just because you say Kent State stinks, be leery on the other side. Kent State is an okay defense out there, but you want to be say, you know what? If Western Michigan really needs it, this kid's not going to be throwing dimes all over the field to extend that lead. They're going to keep it on the ground. And again, they're down one running back. Jarvion Franklin in the first quarter, second quarter gets nicked up a little bit. Now who are we looking at and what type of offense do you have for Western Michigan? Yeah, yeah, good, good point. And they, they got a bunch of injuries, too, on Western Michigan. So that's not the same Western Michigan from early in the season. What about yeah, I mean, you, take, Big take Man? Take away the quarterback and three running backs. I mean, you're already down. Now you're saying cover three touchdowns. It's, it's not as easy as it sounds. Yeah, it's just, it just takes some balls to bet to bet the mm -hmm. uh, like Kent State side. But, Big Man, any thoughts on tonight? Uh, no, I don't have a particular thought on this game. Maybe under, but not not really. Kent, Kent is a dreadful team. Worst offense in the country. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I mean, Donnie, you and I. I mean, how? I mean, no, I know you don't. Have, you don't. You don't have to tell me, Jeff. I've they, watched more Kent State yeah. than anybody. My eyes hurt. No, no, I, I know. I'm just making that clear. We, we, all, we both know that. Uh, Toledo, Ohio. I don't know. I mean, it's a tough game because you have two really good offensive groups here. You have a team at home. You have a team that is the best team in the MAC. What is it? West. Uh, Miami of Ohio's really you know went away. If you look at this game. I mean, it's. I guess it matters, but I mean they're going to probably play each other in the uh, in the title game uh, over probably. I mean I don't really see a ton of stops here. Toledo really can't seem to get stops in a pass game. I know it looks on paper that they do, but they normally don't. work has been all really dynamic lately. I like Ohio's offense. Um, the concern is you know they just kind of run clock with their rush offense, but. It'll be a good game. I don't have much feel on any of these, really. I I know you guys are mentioning it's a great card. I don't I don't know that I see that, but I think it's kind of tough. I mean, I could see Ohio winning at home. Truthfully, I could see Toledo winning by double digits. I just I, I don't have much feel on it, really. Yeah, decent betting card. It's a better viewing. Card. Right, I think right. it's a good view tonight. Some of these games, but yeah, betting. I've seen better bets out there, but I agree with Big Man's assessment on over the total with Ohio Toledo. Uh, we probably should see points in that game. How about the pride of Oakville, Ontario, Canada? My guy Nathan Rourke, quarterback for the Ohio Bobcats, uh, Canadian, uh, looking to get the job done, getting a spotlight here uh, for on national TV. It's an ESPN two game. How about the fact he's got 16 rushing touchdowns this year? This is a dual threat quarterback. He can throw it. He can run it. So it's going to be a test for Toledo's defense. Toledo has been gashed along the ground a little bit as well. So maybe it's a chance for Ohio uh, to get some things going here uh, on the offensive side of the ball. And I think nobody's stopping uh, Logan Woodside in the Toledo offense. I mean, nobody's been able to. So far, I don't think Ohio is going to be able to slow them down. I know Ohio's got a decent defense, but this is a weaponry that they haven't seen a whole lot of uh, this season. So the fact, the case to be made for points, I think, is a pretty good case to make. 
Yeah, it is kind of interesting that it's only, what, 62 and a half right now. And we got Richard in the chat box right now. By the way, guys, uh, 130 people watching on YouTube right now. We appreciate it. Please give us a like, uh, like button, uh, the thumbs up, and feel free to chime in on what you like to hear. He's saying Eastern Michigan line is amazing. Is anybody else uh, surprised by Eastern Michigan minus two over Central Michigan? Eastern Michigan has been a road warrior against the spread. I think they've covered something like 11 in a row ATS on the road, Eastern Michigan. Or 16. Uh, something like like They've been fantastic. And that's the only reservation I have because I lean central here as a home underdog because this is a close, competitively lined game. Who has been winning the close games lately? Central Michigan. Who's been losing every close game lately? Eastern Michigan. So who do you trust to make that one key play, that one big play? throw offensively that one big catch that one big stop on the defensive side of the ball in a close game central's been making some of these eastern hasn't so i kind of like central and i like shane morris i think shane morris is getting better and better each week he's got his wide receivers back they're healthy again offensive line good central michigan i gotta lean to them as the uh, slight home dog there even though i'm that that eastern michigan road ats track record really is astonishing but i think it's got a chance to come to an end tonight yeah, Central Michigan's getting a little healthier too, but I think Eastern Michigan, you know, that record is is really deceiving, as all of us know. I mean, they're they're a lot better team than what three and six. Also, their defense is pretty impressive. I mean, they've they've done a great job there with that group. I mean, I remember a couple of years ago they were awful, Eastern Michigan. I mean, they they couldn't do anything. Now they're you know they're making bowls, they're, they're playing well, you know. And you know, look, I, I know a lot of people devalue this, but I think it's important for teams like Eastern Michigan. These are winnable games. I know they haven't won games like this, but you know the time is now. There are three games left. You got three wins, three games left. You have two winnable games to end your season against Miami of Ohio and Bowling Green. Um, th this is a very big game for this crew. I, I know they don't, you know, their record might not show it, but I think they're better defensively than Eastern Michigan. Central's off a huge win, a game that I don't think anyone thought they would win. They come back and win it um, in adverse weather conditions. You know. They're also, like Ian said, Eastern Michigan's a great road team, and that's under coaching. That's under what Chris Creighton's done there, 5-0 and this year against the spread. Um, Central Michigan hasn't covered a home game this year. I think, to be honest, guys, I, I think they're baiting you to take Central. I mean, I think a lot of people are under the, the reasoning to think, well, Eastern Michigan, look at their record. They're, they're not winning these type of games. I think overall defense will play a big part in this game. I kind of want to lay the two here. I, I be be honest. Yeah, I'm with you. If, if I'm playing this game, it's on Eastern as well. Guys, we got a big Saturday college football slate we got to get into. There's good Mac talk there, but let's start off with the main event, 165, 166. SBR odd screen showing Notre Dame minus three across the board, 57 and a half the total. This one uh, down there in South Florida, going to be a hell of an atmosphere. As a fan, this is the most excited I've been for a college football game all season long. I know Donnie is as well. Donnie, you want to start us off with your breakdown on this game? Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, you, again, South Florida is going to be alive. It's going to be, you know, rivalry weekend again. Top two, uh, top 10 teams now, both th number three and number seven, according to the latest uh, playoff rankings. But that's not going to matter too much when you head down to South Florida. The place is going to be electric tonight. What you're going to want to lean on is that Miami defense. Are they going to be able to stop that power rushing game from Notre Dame? Notre Dame has been running up incredible numbers over the past five to six weeks, which does, you know, you know, pique your interest. But if you're going to lean on Miami and say, you know, what are the best things that we do? You know, you have three of maybe the best linebacking core in the entire nation to try to handle that read option running game it's going to be a tough game but you know what's interesting about this when you look at it forget a side perspective minus three minus two and a half the over under 57 and a half to me actually seems a little bit high for this type of football game I think Miami's going to want to get out there ground and pound with Travis Homer try to give him a little bit more football and as we've seen you know Miami's not really that huge home run hitting team I think they're going to be able to keep that Notre Dame run game at bay not to say that Notre Dame's going to run for 350 yards but I think the clock's going to be moving 57 and a half to me just seems seems a little bit rich for this game. It is, it is under the lights, but a lot of eyeballs in this kind of tends to be, well, I don't know what you guys think about it, but big man, any follow-up on what Donnie said? Yeah, I, I actually agree with him pretty, pretty, pretty completely with the total, but I, I think here's where stats are a little misleading, okay, with people saying that Miami's rush defense isn't particularly good. Um, you look at per carry, 3.92 yards, that's top – 40. That's very good. They've given up four 
rushing touchdowns this year. Washington's only given up three, and they're the number one rush defense in the country. I think if you look at stats, rushing defense looks at yardage allowed per game. You know, look, I think it's kind of a misleading stat. Per carry, they've actually been pretty good. And I think, t- to be honest, I'm not necessarily sold on Notre Dame uh, defensively, particularly in the passing game. It's all going to come down to Malik Rozier. If he does not turn the football over, if he makes you know some plays like he did against – uh, they need a, like a Berrios to step up. They need another big game out of him. One of those random players to, to step up and give them a huge game like they had in that game against Florida State, a game that you really threw all the stats out. Uh, it was a close game. I've stuck with Miami. I'm going to stick with them. I think they're a special team. I think Mark Richta finally seems to have found a place that's going to work for him. It's his alma mater. It's a place that you know he got a lot of flack for not winning it at Georgia. Um, you have the ability now. I mean, you've been kind of disrespected in the polls a little bit. Um, you got a team coming in here. You're at home. The atmosphere is back at the U. I just think overall, I, I think Miami's touched a little bit. I think they're – I also look at a freshman quarterback on the road. You Can he make the throws? I know it's always a question mark. He's been able to do with it so far, but – I just think you have to look a little bit more into this one. I think Miami's kind of touched a little bit. I'm going to keep riding them here. A dog at home, I'll take it. The home dog is howling. What about you, Ian? You agree? It's a great watch. I won't be involved, though, betting-wise. Uh, so if I, I definitely there's no question Jeff and Donnie are, feel stronger on this game than I do, but it's a good one to watch. There's just a value problem right now with Miami. I mean, they were priced as a home underdog last week against Virginia Tech. We saw how that game played out, and here they are a home underdog again. I think Notre Dame's a little bit better. I think they could beat them, but the value's not right. The price ain't right. There's no way I could I could lay three with Notre Dame here uh, on the road. So it's a game I'm staying clearly away from, but it's a good one to watch. I think Miami again, though. I mean, people are just odds makers. I don't think are buying into this team, and as a result, you know, there might still be value yet again to back them here. And Donnie and Big Man, I know you guys got some opinion on this game. What about? Notre Dame's rushing attack that, you know, a bunch of NFL guys on the offensive line going up against Miami's front seven, front eight. If you're betting the U, that's got to worry, you know? Yeah. I no, mean, I mean, it's, it's you know, go ahead. Uh, no, you got it. Go ahead. No, I mean, you're right. I mean, it's a great rushing get- attack. I mean, your only trip up on the season was a close loss to Georgia. And what is Georgia doing out there annihilating everybody in its wake? I mean, this is a really good football team. But you're right. Jeff brings up a good point as well. Sometimes in these atmospheres, players perform differently. It just seems like when Miami gets under the lights in South Florida, now that they have a good football team. I mean, coming into the game, Virginia Tech was destroying everything in their wake as well. Miami put a quick stop to that and blew that team out. You know, you, you can even stop back and say, you know, if Rozier doesn't throw three dumb interceptions, I mean, what's the final score of that football game where it ends up? I know you can't do that, but heading into this game, if Notre Dame just think it's going to line up and obliterate that Miami defense, that's not going to happen. It's going to be a great football game either way, though. Any follow-up, Jeff? Yeah. Uh, I, again, I, I, I totally hear the points. I mean, you know, they have a great offensive line. They always do. I mean, but, you know, you look at what Georgia did. I mean, they had, you know, what, 50, 50 some yards rushing in that game. Um, that That's, that's you know, pretty impressive. I mean, I, I from Georgia's point of view, I, I don't know. It, it's always, like I said, I throw a lot of the stats out. I mean, I, I, I just am really looking at this game from a betting perspective. I can get an undefeated team at home. Um, you know, plus three, I'm going to take a shot with that. I think that the, the kind of the allure, the magic is back at that university. You know, they're, they're just an exciting team again. I mean, they're the turnover chain. I mean, what an, what a cool uh, little idea. I mean, and you look at it guys, I mean, last three games for Miami, 12 turnovers in three games. I mean, does that have something to do with it? Probably not, but it's a cool little touch. It's, it's fun to be a Miami football fan again. And could it end this week? Sure. But I got to tell you, I have a weird feeling they're going to knock the fuck out of Notre Dame, uh, put Notre Dame back in their place, um, which I'll be happy to see because I'm, you know, as always, I always like seeing Notre Dame lose. No, no, I love that turnover chain as well. But guys, it is a big weekend. We got also another one at eight o'clock TCU, Oklahoma. Looks like this one's 62 and a half, six and a half or seven on the Sooners. And also the uh, oldest rivalry in the South. We had Conrado, um, Conrado in the um, chat box saying he's going to be tailgating there. War Eagle, man. We got Georgia, Auburn. Looks like Georgia's minus three, minus two and a half. A good one to shop around on as well. 47 the total. Ian, do you want to start us off on these two? Any opinion on these two big games? 
Uh, it's TCU. I'm leaning that way, but I need seven at least. Uh, if I don't get that, I'm going to stay away from the Horn Frogs. Uh, I still, I really like their defense. I really do TCU. It's all about Kenny Hill. Does he have the mindset? Does he have the power in him to play well and consistently for 60 minutes? Maybe he does against this defense. I don't know how you can make a strong case for Oklahoma's defense laying these kind of points against anyone right now. They're very fortunate. They faced a, a, an even worse defense in Oklahoma State last week because neither of those teams played well on that side of the ball. At least TCU is going to put up a fight defensively, going to put up some resistance defensively. And for that reason, at that price, I can only look TCU in that game. I think they got a chance maybe to get the job done, win outright, but certainly looking at them plus the points. The other game, Georgia and Auburn, Look, I know Auburn's done a lot of great things. Jared Stidham in the offense struggled early on. They're getting their footing together. They're putting up points now, moving the football effectively, but they are facing a very, very good defense, and I'm just not in the business of fading Georgia in a price range where they pretty much have to win the game in order to cover the number. That's pr pretty much period, end of story. Georgia, for some reason, things have not gone well for them at times in the past against Auburn. You remember the immaculate deflection game, Ricardo Lewis off the hands of the Georgia players, right into Ricardo Lewis' hands, Nick Marshall and Auburn with an improbable win uh, against Georgia a few years back. Uh, for some reason, Georgia has had a lot of heartbreak over the years uh, against Auburn. I think Georgia's got a chance to snap that finally here uh, in this game less than a field goal i can only lean georgia so lean in georgia for ian what about you jeff any opinion on those two yeah i mean i i think this is a little too much respect for auburn truthfully i mean uh, let's be real i mean who have they beaten really and any step-up game they've lost i mean i i don't i don't know that i see it i don't think they're a team that is a team that can derail georgia like ian said i mean they're just such an elite defense i mean they could be the best defense we have in this uh, country um you know i think this is also you know got to look at the last hurdle for georgia i mean th this is probably the last you know tough game they're gonna have you know to get to the to the sec title look Karrion johnson's very good i'm not gonna take anything away from him you know i'm a i'm a, I'm a stidham guy I liked him at baylor like him here but you know I, I just don't know if they could break down a team like georgia georgia's been pretty much taking care of everyone in front of them they've um they, they've really just owned everyone. You look at their SEC defense. I mean, I think they're giving up like 10 points a game in the SEC. Um, you know, is this going to present a problem? Sure, it's in Jordan Hare. It's been kind of a house of horrors, as he had mentioned. But I also think uh, some of these kids remember some stuff like that. Um, it's always uh, fun to play a game like this. That Georgia team, I mean, just such an impressive run defense. And Auburn has lately uh, been giving up some points. I mean, they're giving up 24 points a game, which is a little bit – higher than their normal average it'll be a knockdown drag up type of game but anything under three i don't i'm not sure how you don't take georgia i don't really know i understand why you wouldn't do that yeah i don't necessarily disagree with you jeff but um i mean they did beat mississippi state they beat texas a&m depending on what number you got with texas a&m they covered both games you're not impressed by those two victories no and, and largely drew i'll be I'll, i'll actually will be devil's advocate for myself here i mean we could make the case of what has Georgia really done other than beating Notre Dame, which is a good point also. Listen, I think this is obviously one of the most overrated conferences in sports uh, year after year. You have one or two real good teams, and that's about it. Uh, I think it's vastly overrated on the, the grand scheme of things. But, um, yeah, I mean, sure. I mean, those are nice wins, and, you know, uh, you know, they're, they're going to have to play here. I mean, th this, is, this isn't going to be easy. But I, I just think at this number, uh, getting it under a field goal, it's, it's hard to, to not like that. Yeah. And Donnie, what about you? Any thoughts on these last two games? The yeah, Auburn game is going to be a fun one to watch. I don't have really a lean on that one. But if you're looking at capping, betting, doing whatever you want on the Big 12, just, you know, you might as well just get into your car and uh, put a couple dynamite sticks in it and fire yourself into the sun. There's no way to cap it. I mean, you might as well go out with your friends, play three on three football on a Saturday. That's pretty much what the Big 12 is out there. No rhyme, reason or anything given. And I hope that they don't get a single team in the final four. That's the Big 12. Big 12. I can't. It's the worst football on the planet. It's the, it's by far the worst football on the planet. <laughs> I mean, I don't. I mean, he's he's right. I mean, it's defensively, it's it's pathetic. I mean, it's 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 disgraceful to watch. I mean, it's it's not. There's no real game plan. I mean, even the the, the announcers. I mean, many times you said, well, you know, defenses are okay with just getting shredded all game. I mean, it's embarrassing. I mean. I would love to see an Oklahoma against like a good defense. It would be interesting to watch, but I mean, to call it, you know, to call it exciting, to call it 
whatever, okay. But yeah, Jeff, yeah, it's, not it's actually exciting. For like, it's, it's exciting for the first three minutes, and then you're bored of the game already. Yeah, it's oh, my like, God, did you see four straight touchdowns? Yeah, that's not really what I want to see. Right. It's like when you, you know, it's like when you first start drinking and it's like, it's fun. You get drunk. It's like cool to do. But then a couple of years later, it's like, well, I mean, who's the corny drunk guy at the party? Like he's not that cool anymore. Uh, th that's kind of what it is. The big 12. It's the same song and dance year after year. We basically award people because they just basically say, we're not going to play defense and people love it. And it's interesting, but I mean, we, we have to, just but how do they all end up in one division, Jeff? Like, why is that conference the I don't give a damn about defense? And because I mean, it goes back to like you know Texas Tech, where the quarterback sits in the pocket flat-footed by the third quarter because the defensive line is so tired on its 89th snap to go right. after the pass it's, rusher. It's, I, I don't understand. I, I just I don't understand how that conference got like that. It's pretty amazing, and it's it's literally every team is the same way. They all just don't care. Uh, they're just. It's Olay defense. Hey, just yep. we'll match you. You know, we'll be there Let's, to you know we'll be there to pick it up at the end. And uh, you know, it, it's I don't know. I guess if you like that, fine, cool. I'm more of interested in a you know defensive battle. You know, who's going to hit me in the mouth? Yes, who's going to get a yeah, stop? Come on, yes. You know, yeah. that's football. This you know this this stuff isn't. Video game pinball up and down the field. Yeah, I don't want to see that every single game. There's no way. You got to have some defense, get some stops, some big hits, big tackles, big one on one yeah. tackle in the open field. You got to see some of that from time to time. And you're right. In the Big 12, it's roll the football out, throw it left and right. Let's just outscore the other team. Let's not worry about being sure tacklers in the open field. Let's not worry about good technique in the secondary. Let's just score, 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 and have more points than the other team when the game's all said and done. And also, I knew they, I knew they have to like fill time on like the college game day stuff and that kind of thing. But like, at what point did Mike Gundy become like some offensive gene? Like, I, when did that start? Mike Gundy's a dope. I mean, can we be real here, people? Yeah, but he's got the mullet. You know, that's part of it. This is fucking football. It's not. You know, if you want to be a, a fashion model, go 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 do that. I mean, look, I love nice clothes. I like wearing, you know, I just bought some Louis Vuitton loafers. I, I like that kind of stuff, but I'm not a football coach. I don't have a, sh a disgraceful, disgusting defense that literally if God himself said, listen, you have to get a stop or we're all going to kill you. They couldn't do it. It's amazing how poor they are. And, and they just, they take it. They don't have any problem with it. They're okay with it. It's it's, and it's the same every time, Jeff. Every time it's Oklahoma, like you, you figure, like Oklahoma State, you got, you got Team Boo Pickens back there. You got all the money in the world to go out, get coordinators, you know, put the full court press on uh, recruits out there. And you say, you know what? We just got to build a defense that can compete with Oklahoma. And they get stuffed every single year into a box by Oklahoma's offense. Yeah. And, and then you get chance after chance after chance, you know, against Oklahoma. I mean, I mean, they literally changed the rules to give you another chance. And you still couldn't do it. And I don't blame their offense. Their offense is fine. They can move the ball. We all know that. But just the, the, the just disgusting defense. I was really blown away, guys. I had Oklahoma State. I thought defensively they were really going to. I thought they were come. turning a corner with the way right, they played against right. Texas and West Virginia. And then they let go of that stink bomb. And, and they always have that kind of defense that you somewhat trust because they've had guys like the Emmanuel, you know, Ugbuzz kind of people. They've had guys like that that are pretty decent. They can kind of get a stop when you need them. They were like West Virginia last year. West Virginia could get stops when you needed to. But they just – I was blown away with how just how poor they were. Well, if uh, the coaching uh, fails for Mike Gundy and he moves on from coaching football, I can send in his resume to Dolce and Gabbana. I'm sure they can. Also, um, I, maybe I'm not clear here. I don't live in the South or can't comment on it, but wasn't the mullet popular in like the 80s? I mean, are we just yeah, clowning well, on the guy now or what? Yeah, rat tails and all that stuff, sure. When did that become cool? I mean, to me, that's one of the lamest, stupidest haircuts I've ever he seen. Needs to give, they need he a gimmick, like though. I guess he needs a gimmick. And it's, and how about the one where we're so good at the beginning of the year, like, I'll show up at the press conference, like, guys, make it quick. I'm going dove hunting in the morning and then just leaving. Like, yeah, man, he's cool, man. He but it's cool. not even trendy. And, and look, I, I'll be real. I mean, I have a blowout haircut. It's not the trendiest thing either. But um, I'm also not a college coach. I mean, it, it seems like he literally goes and, and like... He's got a nice tan, too. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's interesting. He's got kind of that... He's got kind of the, the 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 Guido style, yet he lives in the South. It's pretty interesting. I I kind of give him a little respect, but you're a football coach. Yeah. Worry about the football, yeah. and then worry about your hair. You know, if yeah, you want exactly. to be a, a regular guy like me, I go get my hair cut every week. Yeah, so I don't. Have, I'm not a college coach.
But when you have a defense that just cannot get a stop, then we got a problem. Yeah, I love my hair. I make sure it looks pretty decent sure. when, uh, every day. But I got that time to focus on it. And I'll tell you right, right. now, if, if my hairdresser ever thinks about putting a mullet on me, I'm grabbing the scissors from his fucking hand and gouging his eyes out with those scissors. I'm not getting a mullet, my friend. Never. I guess his wife likes it. I I'm not sure. I've never, you know, maybe his wife's into it. I'm not sure. But, hey, uh, I think it's time to get rid of it. Looks kind of yeah. stupid if he has me. I don't know. I take the other side. I mean, it's business in the front, party in the back. Donnie, who, who's, who are you siding with? Well, it's interesting. Where are you from? Yeah, you know? now, now, if you're undefeated and you're making runs at national titles, I mean, you right. can do whatever you want with your hair. But when you're out there looking like a clown getting beat in bed, like Bedlam, you shouldn't even show up <laughs> to Bedlam anyway. You, when your only job in that football program at Ohio, or, uh, excuse me, Oklahoma State is to win Bedlam, Reese, hang in around in Bedlam, they get slapped every year. Yeah, you, you can't wear the mullet like that. And, and he gave up not 42, not 52, 62 points in the game. I mean, come on. Yeah, to Baker Mayfield. And uh, hell, Baker Mayfield's probably leading the way for the Heisman Trophy, huh? If, if for no reason Stop. nobody else out there. No, so no. Barry no, Melrose, no. No, long longtime LA Kings coach, Barry Melrose wore a mellow, but that was back in the early 90s, back when that hairstyle okay. was more He's still wearing it like that. Yeah. Yeah. We, still can, like that. we cannot oh, yeah. Yeah, right. reward Baker Mayfield for this shit. No, 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 no. Do not give him, no. It can't happen. He should not be rewarded for facing that shit defense crap every week. No. No, give it to someone that deserves it. No. No, no, no. All right, maybe Heisman Heisman talk next week, big man. We're, we're going to we're going to hit that next week. But guys, we got to get into um degenerate special. We got a good one here. And what I thought was a good one in the beginning of the season, Tulane Dewey, Green Wave. Dewey, Drew, Dewey. <laughs> I like it, man. We got uh, two and seven ATS East Carolina versus Tulane, who actually had it going there under Willie Fritz at the beginning of the season. Dropped their last two, actually dropped their last four. Dropped three of the last four ATS. So we got Tulane versus East Carolina, sixty-four the total, minus five, pretty much across the way. You can find a five and a half at Chris right now. Tulane minus five on the road. Donnie, start us off. How you betting this one, man? Tulane minus. I mean, Tulane. Tulane at home. You know, maybe we can get excited for laying points. The last time you saw them, I guess. I mean, maybe people are still hanging their hats on the Tulsa game. That was that pre-hurricane. We're gonna play it at six a.m. in the morning, and they really throttled that football team. Playing, going on the road to FAU the next week, getting dropped in that one. No shame. Getting beat by South Florida and hanging around thirty-four to twenty-eight when that game was actually thirty-four to seven late in that football game. Memphis trashed them. Then you lose to a bad Cincinnati team. Say what you want about East Carolina. Their defense does think they're gonna have a tough time stopping that running game. But if you're gonna give me points with East Carolina. The one thing I know is they can get lucky and go real fast on offense and score some points. I'm not looking to lay Tulane with anything right now. I'll take the points with ECU in this one. I like it, Donnie. I, I do. I, Tulane's banged up. I'm going to be on the side of Donnie as well. I'm taking uh, ECU as well. So, Ian, what about you? You know, T Tulane hasn't had a bye yet this year. That's another thing, too. I mean, we're talking now November the 8th, going on November, what, 11th, 12th by the time this weekend comes around. You haven't had a bye week yet this year, and it's it's showing. If you've seen Tulane's results uh, the last few weeks and see them play, they look fatigued. They look physically worn down. In the second half, they're not playing good football. You remember what Memphis did, completely ran them out in, in the second half of that game a couple weeks ago. This is a football team that it, it's getting better with Willie Fritz, but – they're still undermanned. It's still taking time to influx the talent level here at this Green Wave program. And with that long, without a, a rest week or a bye week to get some injuries back, get a little rest in you, we're seeing Tulane not really bring their A effort. I mean, they're looking sluggish week after week after week. And that's not a team I'm looking to lay points with here uh, on the road. Even though I like this Tulane team and I've liked them all season, uh, they're showing like they're running on fumes right now. So, yeah, I could lean a little bit to East Carolina and over the total because it's affected their defense. They're not getting the stops now that they did early on. Yeah, over the total as well because ECU's bad defense against that option. That that could be a good way to look at it. What about you, Jeff? Well, I'm going to try to sell you guys on Tulane. I'm going to do a sales job here, okay? Uh, first of all, ECU, 2-7 and seven against the spread. They're not doing anything. Season's over. See you next year. Have a good uh, summer or winter, whatever we're in here. Um, I know Tulane struggled. They've lost four in a row. But all four were to, to good teams other than Cincinnati, where you lost by one, came down to the wire. Um, you, you look at what East Carolina does well, pass offense. Thomas Sirk, you know, good offense. 
Well, I mean, it hasn't shown the stats because he only scored about 23 and a half points a game. And now you got to face Tulane, who has actually been fairly good against the past 50th overall in the country, done a, done a good job against American Athletic Conference uh, offenses, which is impressive. ECU, what does Tulane do well, guys? They run the football. John Banks, tough kid, runs the option. Um, TC or uh, East Carolina is giving up 238 yards a game, 5.6 yards a carry. Um, they also are the worst team in the country on third down. They're giving up the most third down conversions in the country, allowing almost 56% conversions. That's dreadful, and it's actually bad and worse by a, a pretty wide margin statistically. Um, I just don't think it's a particularly good matchup for the uh, TCU t or ECU team. At the end of the day, I mean, we, we still have to point out a team like Tulane, young, new coach, uh, haven't had much success, only won four games last year. They have the shot at the bowl here. I know it's probably unlikely, but they have a reason to play here on the road. There's a reason to get excited for this one. I'm not betting East Carolina here. I, I don't see any reason to think that they're going to do well in this game, um, and they haven't all year. So I actually go with the green wave here. All right, so big man on the green wave. And actually, Donnie, I, looking at their schedule, it looks like ECU had a bye and then went out and got smashed last week. That does kind of scare me a little bit, bet, betting ECU, no? Uh, Houston's a pretty good football team, though. I mean, just I just look at it the way is I'm not really a big fan. If this game was roles reversed and Tulane was at home, I would agree with the big man. I would be on Tulane. But just them going on the road, they don't show me that much where they're a team capable of laying the wood. Uh, the Tulsa game is an anomaly to me. It was just a completely weird situation where they were able to roll over them. If you look at the other games, I mean, it was a little bit of step up in class, but I just don't like Tulane in a role where it says you have to win by seven or more points on the road. It just breaks down to as simple as that. That's all. All right. Well, I, I I can't tell if I lean over or side with you, Donnie. Either way, uh, big man, you had you had one thing you wanted to throw out, bet against. Yeah, just quickly, I found it interesting. I actually wanted to give a little credit where it's due. I actually remember there was an episode we did, you all of us, where a Donnie had to leave. He had to go like the dentist or something. And I remember Ian Cameron and I we we, we kind of got into it a little bit over Mike Price at UTEP. And, you know, I was kind of I saying to myself, that. well, you know, new team. And they actually played pretty well. I think they covered a game, and we were kind of on that side. But you, you, you get back to the realization now, guys, that UTEP has Mike Price as their coach and really aren't going to continue to have him as their coach. So you're not only is your season over, but I think as a student athlete, you have to understand at this point that you really – what are you really playing for? You have no real leader. You have no one that seemingly cares. And – the direction has showed, guys. I mean, this team is statistically the second worst team in the country offensively. They're scoring 11 points a game. They've scored more than 20 once this year in nine games. Their best player, Quadriz Watley's out with a clavicle injury. Um, he got so hurt. Did he get hurt in the game last week? Or is, he, did. He, I mean, he played last week. He did. They're now down to their third string running back. And get this, guys. Uh, amazing stat here. And this is by, like, about 15. They've only had 103 first downs this year in nine games. And it's the worst by, like, 15. It's amazing how inept this offense is. And I go to Mike Price, and I want to shout out to our good friend, Babano, Pee Wee's Pickhouse, Ian Cameron. Listen to this quote by Mike Price, because Ian called it. We're struggling on offense. We need to get much better, he said. This is more complicated than I thought it'd be. The job is more complicated than I thought. This resurrection is more complicated than I thought. Um, what a surprise, Ian, right? Does that sound like a bet on quote to you? No. <laughs> no. And, and I got to tell you, you called it. You told me. Because I, I try to make the case for my press. I, I, I try to say, well, you know, he did somewhat resurrect UTEP at one point. They, they made some bowl games. They did some good things. But the truth of the matter is he's been away from football for years. Um, I guess he's just kind of a stopgap guy. They're getting to the end of the year. But as a student athlete, I mean, when you go to football practice after you go to school all day, how do you get up? And not only get up, but now you have to go and get beat up again this week. You got to play, a, uh, you know, you play good teams every week. You got to go play North Texas, who is one of the better teams in this conference, after getting worked by a middle Tennessee State team that hadn't blown at anyone all year. Um, how do you, how do you, as a program, get up anymore? 
I mean, that's the question. And you know what's funny? Mike Price got a resurgence out of UTEP for a year, maybe a year and a half. And then when he was gone out of there a few years ago, they were as, as much in shambles, if not more, as when he t took them over. I mean, that team was just horrendous by the time Mike Price was out of there. This was a ridiculous decision. Why not get a young person in there that can relate to these kids here? I think they might be waiting on that. Get something going. Yeah, they need to stop. Uh, that was almost like what the Jim Grobe situation for bail of the year before. Right. You just yeah, look I and say, hey, no, could no. anybody does anybody retired have free time just to see this meaningless <laughs> team? I yeah. actually watched all four quarters of that Middle Tennessee State game. Sure. And the best part about that, Jeff, is you're saying, no, Wadley's coming back. Like, that was the whole late synopsis. Like, at least they actually have a real football right. player. That was you're saying he's out again? Jeff, they, they, I mean, put it this way. If I'm putting this in layman terms, Kent State would be minus 13 and a half versus UTEP. And then, guys, I mean, they actually had a – in that game against Middle, they had 137 total yards. <laughs> they were so bad that, Jeff, they were awful. And now you said – Wadley was the only guy that looked like – like, oh, he has a little bit of burst. And now that he's out, I just can't – I can't stop laughing. That was my only funny, angle, man. actually. I mean, I thought they at least have one player that can beat yeah, that. Right. You know, oh, they, they, they could give him the ball and say, hey, get us a first down. But 103 first downs in nine games – yeah, I mean that's that's pretty amazing. Yeah, and it's not like Middle Tennessee had a uh, ha has a stellar defense. Yeah, they're, I mean they're okay on defense, but you're right though. When when it breaks down to it, it's like forget about scoring points. Like if UTEP gets a first down, you're like, damn, that was a nice drive. That's amazing. That's terrible. Yeah, it's it, and that's kind of what you're dealing with in the doldrums <laughs> of college football. I mean, it's I mean just put it into perspective, guys. The number one first down team in the country is Ohio State. They have 256. You know, it's one of those teams that they got three points in the fourth quarter. UTEP's got the ball third and eight. Nice 20-yard pass play. First down. Wow. What a play. That's it's like awesome. In, That's it's like amazing. That, wow. Wow. It's like in that movie Little Giants when the Little Giants get a yard and the whole crowd goes, we got a yard. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Like, true. Like, that's really what it is at this point. UTEP, like, Kent State, throw them all in that same kettle. That's what you're like when they get one first. I think you're disrespecting Kent State by putting them in UTEP's kettle. Let me ask you guys, Ian, <laughs> Ian, Donnie, whoever, Drew, if, if let's say you you need a first down. If you get a first down, you and your team, each player gets a million dollars. Who would you trust to get the first down, Kent or UTEP? Oh, I mean, it's, I mean, it's Kent State. At least Kent, like Kent State, really? at least even has a read option. Exactly. UTEP doesn't even have any. I if you ever seen Ryan Mets, Greenlee and Mets play quarterback, I, I, who gave them scholarships? No wonder. It must have been Kugler out there gave them a scholarship because he's like, Jeff, you had a head coach midway through the season. It's like, you know what? I don't know if they're going to fire me, but I can't even be around this team right now. I'm out. You know what? I'm out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Kugler actually picked Greenlee out of Fresno. He took him away from Fresno and, and tried to get him somehow to come there. But it, it, yeah, it's. It's pretty pathetic, really. Good for Fresno, by the way, to get McMarion in there because McMarion's played really well for them. Yeah, they could be with Green at this point. Yeah. God's sake. Is that yeah, I don't know who six. I'd pick. It's tough. Ian, is he wears number six for Fresno. Yeah, he'll transfer from Oregon State. Yep. Yeah, that guy's pretty good. Um, and also for Miss, uh, for Middle Tennessee, Donnie, uh, stock's still back. That's a uh, betting angle to take. Take Good betting over. angle. It looks like Clue is going to play this week also for a Charlotte, which is actually I like that even better because their offense is anemic with him in there. Should be an interesting game, but you get that stock still rust factor out where he didn't look that great against UTEP, and they still pressed the gas and beat them fairly easily. They should be able to handle Charlotte as well. And again, I think they have to win out to uh, make a bowl, so a little bit of incentive to do that where obviously we know Charlotte ain't going nowhere. Yeah, I, I like that one as well. But guys, let's get into best bets. Uh, six and two the last two weeks. Went four and zero oh two weeks ago. Two and two last week. Hats off to you, Donnie, calling that UMass game. Man, that was uh, absolute yeah. right side there. You want to follow that up this week with another winner? You know, let's just go tonight. We'll keep it easy in action. Is it the most fantastic card to bet? I think Ian hit it right on the head. It's more of me. I like Mac football as it is. It's a great viewing card outside of the Kent Western Michigan game the last two, but I'm just going to keep it simple tonight. 107, 108. We're going to go Toledo and Ohio. Line opened up at six, six and a half. I don't care if 67% of the tickets are on Toledo. I don't care that the line dropped down. The Sharps are really, you know, getting after Ohio. Same way with my play last weekend. Plus 28, I took on the show for UMass. Ooh, man, Sharps love it. It closed at 35. It didn't even matter. The Sharps were incredibly wrong i think they're wrong again tonight do i see a blowout no ohio is a really good football team jeff knows that firsthand um and also toledo the one thing that this boils down to you're going to tell me toledo who i think is going to win the football game anyway i'm going to look at nathan rourke who's a really good quarterback in the mac good read option guy but i've seen halves where he's thrown for 10 and 15 yards two for 10 through the air the one thing i know tonight 
is that Woodside is going to be a good quarterback each and every possession. It's not a surprise when they go down and score a touchdown. It's not a surprise when he rips off a 45-yard pass right over the middle. I'm going to lean on Toledo tonight, minus three. That number is all the way below. I don't care who's buying it. I don't care if the sharp side is Ohio. You're telling me Toledo, minus three, basically just to win the football game. I think they're overall the better team. I'll take Toledo tonight as my best bet on the round table. Great all value right. at that number, to me, to me at least. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You can get that at reduced juice right now as well at five dimes and pinnacle on SBR odd screen. Donnie, following up that UMass plus 28 with Toledo tonight, minus three. Big man on campus. Where are you going? Well, I'm not sure if this would be allowed, but would you consider allowing me to bet whatever the opening line is in a college basketball game? Yeah, we, we will. Very good. Uh, give me UCLA against Georgia Tech uh, this weekend in Shanghai. And I'm going to tell you why. You have two Two teams here who are in dire straits in a foreign country. But you have a team in UCLA that is much more talented than Georgia Tech. You look at the three players out for UCLA. LiAngelo Ball, who wouldn't start or play meaningful minutes anyway. The other two are top 50 recruits. The problem with UCLA is they have three or four other top 50 recruits that will come right in. They have Thomas Welsh, Gigi Golem on back to really – solidify and cover Ben Lammers. We look at Georgia Tech and we look into what is going on with this program. There's a lot worse things going on with this program as opposed to what's going on with UCLA. Uh, Josh Okoji out for, for, for the foreseeable future, accepting benefits, their leading score from last year. Todrick Jackson, their third leading score, out. He's also out for impermissible benefits as well. Their coach, under investigation for being involved with the benefits issues. Uh, UCLA is much more talented. I think in a game where a lot will be made of the stuff off the court, UCLA still has to go in there and take care of business. I think UCLA is a top 15 team, in my opinion. Chris Wilkes is fantastic. Jalen Hands is a top recruit. Uh, you still have Aaron Holiday there as well. I think the uh, off-the-court issues, UCLA is a much more polished team, much more ready team in this game. I think they go in there and they pound Georgia Tech. All right, big man on UCLA. And is there a price range that you're looking at? Ballpark? I mean, what do you what do you think? Um, they'll be a favorite, um, but I think they'll. I, I think the outer. I, I think that the Ball brothers will continuously uh, enhance spreads. I mean, the truth of the matter is, Leandro Ball is a twenty second level player at his position in the country. He doesn't belong at this university. I don't know that that's going to matter much. And the two other ones, they're ripe freshmen as well. So I don't know. It's tough to say, Drew, honestly. I, I would say, I don't know, four to seven maybe. And just real quick, big man, follow-up. Does Josh Passner lose his job Um, in your opinion? I would say probably. I mean, yeah. I, I, I think it, with, with the climate the way it is in college bass right now, I have to read more into the story and really understand what's going on, but it doesn't look good. It's, it's a pro- wild one, though, man. From what I've heard, the guy that gave the benefits actually doesn't even – it hates Josh Pazner, so he's not like a booster or anything. It's just but, he's giving players you know, extra benefits. He has nothing to do with Georgia Tech. Yeah, but the, also the, the big problem here, Drew, from a betting perspective is all this is going on and you're in China yeah. with a young team – that just lost their two best players. It is a terrible situation. I'm not downplaying what happened with UCLA. Um, they're out on bail anyway. Um, I think at this point, the U.S. consul will step in, and, and I think they'll get it worked out. But UCLA is much more prepared in this situation, much more. Okay, well, we'll, we'll hit on that. Uh, with college basketball right around the corner, big man on campus knows it as good as anybody. Ian, what are you doing for best bets? Well, we're going to pick on one of the three fate NFL teams that I mentioned earlier in the show, and we're going to do it against the Cincinnati Bengals. I'm going to lay four with Tennessee. Four and a half is the common prevailing number right now, uh, but there is a four out there at Bookmaker Chris, so I'm going to go with that. Tennessee minus four at Bookmaker slash Chris. Look, Cincinnati's effort was pitiful in the second half. Think they got behind. They, they just couldn't execute on offense, couldn't execute on defense. Not good for a team that, you know, that they almost had to have that game against Jacksonville to maintain any hope in the playoff picture. Now that hope is waning. Uh, Andy Dalton's not playing well. The defense is getting gassed. The offensive line continues to be destructive. And I will say this about the Titans' defense. They are starting to play a little bit better. They're off, they had the bye week before the Baltimore game last weekend. 
I think that got everybody a little bit more refreshed. Take advantage of, I think, a downtrodden Bengals team. We're going to lay four with Tennessee. Best bet for the round table. All right, Ian on Tennessee minus four. Big man on campus on UCLA at the opening line. Donnie on Toledo tonight, minus three, minus 105 at five dimes. I'll follow up Maction with Eastern Michigan, minus two, minus 105. That's at five dimes as well. So two Maction tonight. Hopefully can continue the good run of best bets. Look out for big man on campuses, college basketball, conference previews. Ian, Donnie, anything to shout out before we shut it down? No, you know, be on tonight with me on the closing line, break down hockey, so maybe some NBA basketball. Take a look real front and center with these Maction football games and have a little bit of fun. So he'll be joining me tonight. So check that one out. There we go. That and ice guys for me on uh, Thursday, Saturday, and Tuesday, every uh, 9 a.m. Eastern on those three days a week. We're on Morency's show tonight. We've got uh, college basketball uh, tipping off on Friday. Looking forward to that. Uh, we're going to try to get some uh, plans finalized for Jeff and I doing some things on college basketball. So lots coming up here at SBR. Absolutely. College basketball starting on Friday. This is the round table every night or every Wednesday, 930 a.m. Pacific, 1230 Eastern. If you like the content, please give us a thumbs up. It helps us out a lot. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to our channel. Now we've put a lot of work into producing all these free videos, so please help us out and keep all our content free for you forever by simply liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. Now not to mention a visit to our industry leading website will warm the hearts of all our SBR employees, especially myself. Now the links are over there to the left, uh, so do check those out. Thanks for watching.